devotees gathered to this goddess as openly propriety of behavior, scrupulously chastity of thought, speech and conduct. The essential ingredients of outraging of modesty under section 354 IBC are that person assaulted must be a woman and the accused must have used criminal force on her intending thereby to outrage her modesty. What constitutes an outrage modesty to female what constitutes an outrage to female modesty is nowhere defined. The essence of a woman's modesty is her sex. The culpable intention of the accused is the crux of the matter. The reaction of woman is very relevant, but its absence is not always decisive. The act of pulling a woman, removing her dress, coupled with immoral persuasion for sexual intercourse, as such would be an outrage to the modesty of a woman and knowledge that modesty is likely to be on grace is sufficient to constitute the offense. Likewise, cruelty. The legal concept of cruelty in matrimonial offenses is not confined to the positive acts of causing physical injury by one spouse to another. Without there being a physical injury, there can be cruelty in a greater degree. Cruelty can take diverse forms merely not providing sufficient comforts or amenities and even not showing affection may not amount to cruelty. But if the acts are intended to convey the impression that the wife is not wanted and her presence is resented, it would also amount to cruelty. The attitude towards women can be changed only with the proper implementation with the aid of governmental and non governmental the development in science and technology has changed everything in society and women are living with less responsibility. In different life, women are facing violence in society. Changing the mentality of people is not an easy task. But quality education to children at primary stage to eradicate gender inequality and to bring about change in typical thinking about women will bring drastic change in society. That's my perception. The international and national framework to protect rights of women has not attained satisfactory results. Nevertheless, collaboration between all classes of society may be suggested and governmental and non-governmental instruments and effective and efficient judiciary and conscious media is the need of the hour. That's my, my, that's my communication towards the protection of women's right against invasion on their right to privacy and right to live with dignity. Now about children, as we all know, uh, the name you must be knowing, Eglantine Jeb, he was a champion of children's rights and in her iconic 1953 document, Declaration of the Rights of the Child, which was adopted by the United Nations on the right of child, she has made an NGO known as Save the Children. This is one of the leading institutions in India, which provides access to education, nutrition, health care and maternity relief, and as well as infrastructure for equal opportunities to lakhs of Indian children since 2008. See, children form about 42% of the population and are at the risk on the streets, at their workplace, in the schools, and even inside their own homes. Every year, thousands of children become victims of crime, be it kidnapping, violence, attacks, or sexual abuse. Though our constitution has envisaged through a number of articles to ensure happy and healthy childhood for children free from abuse and exploitation and ensure welfare and well-being of the children without which it would not be possible for the nation to progress as a whole as today's child is the leader of the tomorrow. Like Article 15, 3 I have read out, we have Article 21A which mandates that every child in India shall be entitled to 
free and compulsory education up to the age of 14 years. The word life in this context of Article 21D of the Constitution has been found to include education and therefore the Supreme Court has held that right to education is a fundamental right. Article 23 of the Constitution prohibits trafficking of human beings, legali, and other similar forms of forced labor and exploitation. Article 24 expressly prohibits that no child below the age of 14 years shall be employed to work in a factory or mine or engage in hazardous employment. The Supreme Court has issued elaborate guidelines in respect of child labor. Article 39E, 39F especially include children within the ambit of workers, providing protection against abuse and for the extension of equal opportunities and facilities for their growth and development. Article 45 grants an obligation upon the state to endeavor to provide education to all children until they complete the age of 14 years. The directives are not only confined to primary education, but extend to free education to children up to the age of 14 years. As such, the said article recognizes the importance of dignity and personality of the child and directs the state government to provide free and compulsory education to children up to the age of 14 years. Now, all these constitutional provisions and municipal laws framed by state and the central legislation against exploitation of children in many ways, but still it is on rise, be it a sexual abuse, child trafficking, child labor, child marriage, foricide, or infanticide. See, children are considered as a nation's supreme and important national asset and its malleable potential. The future of any nation is largely determined on how its children grow and develop. The issues relating to rights of child care and welfare have been constantly engaging the attention of the world. However, the community has developed its sensitivity towards children's issues only during the last two decades, which has brought on the national agenda issues like child abuse, child marriages, and child labor. In India, after the country's independence, many changes have been brought about from one five-year plan to another five-year plan over problems of children which are multifaceted and multi layered They cover a wide range of fields from nutrition and education to development and protection so that they may become better human beings and healthy citizens in later years. Children are victims of various nature of crime which I have just said above and it has many a dimensions. Child abuse seems to have reached epidemic proportions in our country. A large number of children admitted to pediatric services suffer from non-accidental injury at the hands of their parents and caretakers. Child battery, incest, sexual molestation, Verbal abuse, malnutrition, and underfeeding are among the most common forms of abuse in this country. To the hottest issue in and out of law is the protection of children from all types of abuses and exploitations. Like we have the social evils like child marriage, <coughs> child prostitution, and then the reasons for all these mishappenings to the children are one, lack of father figure to provide security, care and guidance, increased responsibilities of mother, economic hardships, lack of facilities to meet basic needs, unhealthy social environment, malnutrition, coercive attempts by managers of brothels, tauntings, due to dislike by surrounders and lack of proper counselling and guidance, motivation and opportunity gaps. We have certain measures to be adopted like how to rescue and rehabilitate the child prostitutes. The rescue and child prostitutes children should be kept under the nodal department, namely the department of women and child development under the Ministry of Welfare and so on. So, 
it would devise a suitable schemes for proper and effective implementation. The institutions here thus would function as an effective rehabilitation scheme in respect of the fallen women or the children of fallen women, even if they have crossed the aid prescribed by the Juvenile Justice Act. They should not be left to themselves, but should be rehabilitated through self-employment schemes or other measures. The juvenile home should be used only for short stay to relieve the child prostitutes and negative juveniles from the trauma they, have, they would have suffered. They need to be rehabilitated in the appropriate manner and the details are to be worked out by meaningful procedure and programs. Adequate steps should be taken to rescue the prostitutes, child prostitutes and naked juveniles. Measures should be taken to provide them adequate safety, protection and rehabilitation in the juvenile homes manned by qualified trained social workers or homes run by the NGOs with the aid and financial assistance given by the government of India or the state government's consent. A nodal committee with the public spirit NGOs, in particular women organization, women members should be involved in the management. Adequate encouragement may be given to them. The need thus should be provided, the needed funds should be provided and timely payment disbursed so that the scheme would be implemented effectively and fruitfully. And friends, we have the Juvenile Justice Act, which was enacted in India in the year 1986. This was also aimed at to provide for the care, protection, treatment, development and rehabilitation of limited or delicate juveniles and for the adjudication of such matters related to disposition of the juveniles. The object of the Act therefore is to provide a specialized approach towards the delinquent or neglected juvenile to prevent recurrence of juvenile delinquency in its full range keeping in view the developmental need of the child found in the situation of social maladjustment that aim is secured by establishing observation homes, juvenile homes, juvenile homes, houses or neglected juvenile and special homes for delinquent juveniles. Now, all these aspects I have covered in my short write-up to project the situation in India that women and children both are going through most unsafe and insecure phase of life. Day in and day out, we find in our society there is a regular threat and invasion to their privacy. In each day newspaper we read, whether the Hindi daily or the English daily or the national level daily, one or two instances of molestations, outraging females, modesty are, are, are shown, are found in this paper. The recurrence of such instances, that's an alarming feature. We all need to think over, it's not an individual's problem. It's a problem of the society. And all, even the persons, persons in society have to give it a thought the root cause of such happenings in our society. You know, in India, in 2013, if my memory serves me right, about 90,000 children were missing. And number is gradually going on increase. Three days in court, fine, uh, we, are, we, 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 we face this situation. Repetitions are filed, missing daughter, missing sister, sometimes missing wives. Though it's amusing, but it is happening. Why this insecure social atmosphere in our society? It requires to be very seriously deliberated. It's a serious question to be addressed. And unless we, the people of India, ourselves decide to resolve and find out the reasons for such invasions, such insecurity, such threats, 
that law enforcement agency by themselves may not be able to achieve the desired results. We have to cooperate with the law enforcement agencies. We have to also cooperate with the legal system, with our judiciary. As a citizen of India, I am talking, only then we shall be able to reach to our, our desired results. And that's why I say, finally, as I said, the need of the hour is the collaboration among all classes of society and connected and well coordinated efforts at all levels, governmental, non governmental, social organizations, and judiciary, as well to help facilitate the eradication of these social events, to create and promote healthy environment for growth and development of women and children with goal to integrate civil and political right with economic, social and cultural rights and explore the normative synergy at all levels as gender equality is the necessary condition for sound human development. That's my message to all of you. Thank you very much. Sadar Aadhaar, Justice Sri Rohit Aresha, a man. श्री प्रशांत शर्मा एडवोकेट को आमंत्रित करता हूँ श्री प्रशांत शर्मा जी आमंत्रित